Hello, welcome back to another video. Today I recreated or tried to recreate Amanda Rachelis September 2020 bullet journal setup. So I decided to record this outlining part because I thought it'd be interesting for you to see this process. This process usually takes me the longest time out of all of the parts of the video, just outlining everything. So I thought it might be valuable for you to see. All right, here I am outlining my first spread, the cover page. I'm using the small Tombow Furunosuke pen. I decided to use this one because it was the skinniest pen I had, I think. Because all of my other pens that are really small, they're not waterproof. And I wanted it to be waterproof so I could use markers on top of it. Honestly, recreating this entire theme was really, really fun to do. I know that Amanda said it wasn't super doodle heavy, but I think it was still very draw heavy because my hand definitely cramped up a lot while making the spread. So I'm going to kind of sever out of talking about spreads and talk about how this month's theme color is purple. I personally feel like purple is a very underrated color. I know a lot of people don't really like purple, but I feel like it's such a versatile color because the warm tones and the cool tones, they're just, they're so pretty. Whenever I look at purple, it always just reminds me of the sky and just makes me really happy. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like how this theme turned out with purple. I was first considering to actually do this entire spread in brown, so like have the same exact drawings and outlines as Amanda, but do everything in brown, but then I figured, you know what, purple might be kind of fun, and I literally only have three brown markers, so I don't think the brown one would have been as nice. So now I'm going to talk about how the recreating part of this video was. I personally thought that the recreating part was the hardest part, and what I mean by recreating is like the outline, because the colors were pretty set and done, I just picked out the colors and matched them up as well as I could. But the outlining part was actually really hard for me. I watched Amanda's video like twice through while outlining everything and stopped the video multiple, multiple times because my journal size is not the same as Amanda's, so it was really hard for me to get the dimensions down even if she gave the dimensions because our journal sizes aren't the same so I still had to size all of the rectangles accordingly to my journal size. That way everything still looks normal. So adding on to my last little spiel, um, I'm going to talk about how I went about the coloring and the other parts of recreating the spread other than just the outline. So I looked at the pens that Amanda used and I actually had quite a few that she had. Like the purple Tombow Duel brush pen and the purple Crayola Super Tip. I was missing the brown Crayola Super Tip so in its place I used this like very light pink color. I think it still turned out amazing, even if it's not brown. As for washi tapes, I just used what I had. I didn't really have any purple washi tapes, and you'll see me in a little bit try to use this like purpley, pinkish, and blue washi tape in the floral pattern as a substitute for Amanda's purple washi tape, but I didn't like it, so in the end I changed it to just this pink washi tape that kind of had like a constellation pattern and I also used a silver washi tape and both of the washi tapes are from Scotch. Yeah, I still think that the whole theme turned out really well even though the washi tape and the colors weren't exactly the same. So yeah, that's all I had to say about the recreation process. So severing out of that little conversation, I am going to talk about school. I hope to put up a school vlog in less than a week, but if it's next week, that's okay too. I recorded the first few days of school, and I think I'm going to talk about my experience with virtual school, online school, a little bit right now. So, I started school on August 26, 2020, 
At first, our school had a virtual option as well as a in-person option, but a few weeks before school started, there was an announcement from our county that our school was going to be virtual for the first quarter. So that meant that on the first day of school, I was going to be seeing everyone on Zoom. I feel like it's also important to mention that a few days before school started, I went on the 21st to go to school and pick up supplies such as a textbook, our Chromebook, and get to meet the teachers a little. I thought it was really fun and I think it added a lot to what I thought about the teachers, you know, meeting them in person, being able to talk to them and greet them face to face. I think it was really important. And of course, we did it very safely, but I do appreciate them giving us the opportunity to be able to see our teachers face to face as well as talk to them. So back to talking about the first day of school. Um, the night before, I tried to sleep at 9.30, but ended up sleeping around 10.30 because I just could not fall asleep because over the summer, I've always been sleeping around 10.30, 11, 11.30, so trying to sleep that early did not do it for me. I really wish that I had been smarter and a week before school started changed my sleep schedule because on the first day of school, during my first three classes, I was very tired. I woke up at 7am, which was pretty early considering that over the summer I woke up around 8.30 every single day. So that was really fun. <laughs> um, I think it's also kind of important to mention that when I woke up at 7, I ate around 7, which I literally did not do that once over the summer, which made my stomach very upset the first two days of school. So again, I really, really wish I had changed up my sleep as well as eating schedule a week before school started. So if anyone has not yet started school yet, I highly, highly recommend that. Please do it. You will be so happy afterwards. Anyways, back to talking about the first day of school. My first class was at 8 a.m., which I almost missed, I think. Actually, I think I should talk a little bit about how online school was in the spring because we had online school in the spring just to finish up the year. And that was really different because it wasn't super structured, so it's not like at this time you join a Zoom call for this class. It was, we got all of our assignments for the day and we did them and we could join calls if we felt the need to or wanted help. But for this year, we have to join Zoom calls as if we were attending regular class. So anyways, my first class was at 8 a.m which again, pretty early considering that over the summer I woke up around 8.30 every day. My first class was orchestra and I'm very glad I did not play violin that day because my head was tired, my body was tired, and I don't think I could have moved my finger on the violin. So I was really happy that the first day was just kind of meeting everyone, talking to the teachers, and to figure out technology, issues and just trying to figure out how to use zoom because again in the spring we use google meet and now we transfer to zoom another thing i'd like to mention is that personally i still feel like it's the summer i can't really explain this feeling or you know exactly why but i feel like virtual slash online school definitely has something to do with it since although our school is sticking to a pretty strict schedule it still feels like I have a lot of free time to do other things, which is what summer break is to me. I really do like how I'm still able to communicate and talk with my friends, even though we're not in person. So one of my friends actually made a Discord server for us. So Isaac, if you're watching this, please say hi. Thank you so much for making the Discord server. I get to talk with a lot of people that I don't usually talk to in messages. So what my friends and I have been doing for the first few days of school is during our lunch break, we will FaceTime each other or use Discord's voice to talk to each other during lunch as if we were sitting in a lunch table together, which I think is a really cute idea. And it's really nice to be able to see everyone's faces. 
So I'm gonna go back to talking about bullet journaling because I kind of went on a little tangent there. So this spread is the habit tracker and mood tracker spread. I recreated this one even though I have used a mood tracker once and I didn't really like it because I don't really use it because I have a journal where I write down my thoughts, my feelings, and my secrets. <laughs> but I thought I should maybe give it another try just in case a mood tracker will do something for me this month. Um, yeah. This spread was, I think, the fastest spread, maybe, not sure. But it was really fun to make and I utilized my little stamp things for the calendars, which was really fast. I still don't have a stamping block, but I was really smart because <laughs> I used the ink pads clear top cap thing as a acrylic stamping block. Um, it worked okay. I still had to fill in a few of the numbers because I don't think I pressed the stamp far enough down on the ink pad, but definitely still easier than writing out every single number by hand. Definitely do recommend. You can get it on Amazon for like five dollars. Yes, please do get it if you are looking to save some time. So I know I said I would talk about something else, but I want to go back and talk a little more about my channel and my videos. I know I have one video that has done surprisingly well and much better than the rest, which is my crochet bucket hat video. So for anyone who watched that video and liked that video, please tell me, are there any other crochet videos you'd like to see? Anything specific, please tell me. And just to everybody in general who's watching this, are there any videos you would like to see that I don't already have? All right, so back to talking about bullet journaling for real this time. Um, I am decorating this spread and on the bottom, I just used origami paper. Oh, and also, under my bullet journal, I tried to make everything look nice with origami paper, but I don't think it really worked because it didn't really- I mean, it looked nice, but it was just really shifty because I like to turn my bullet journal around when I work. So I really want to know how Amanda did it. Did she tape the paper down onto the table? I don't know, maybe I should try that. Anyways, I'm really excited to see what this whole spread will look like after I fill in all of the little file folders for the mood tracker because I think it would be so so pretty. Another difficult part of this recreation were the headers or the titles like the one here that says habit tracker and mood tracker. The font for those is just so hard for me because usually I just do like simple calligraphy. Um, I don't really know how well I did it. Tell me what you think about it. I think some of the lines are a bit wonky and should have been a little farther away because it's supposed to kind of look like a block lettering, I think, that's also kind of curvy, so yeah. Oh, also did you see what I did with the stamp thing there? That was pretty cool. I edited it out so that it's just stamp, 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 stamp. <laughs> Looking back at my spread here, I honestly think that my choice in washi tape was pretty smart. I think that the pink constellation type washi tape really tied the whole spread together because I used a pink marker instead of Amanda's brown marker, and I think that the silver just gives it a pop, you know, makes it nice and shiny and kind of fancy. <laughs> I also want to mention that when I was making my outline with pencil, I also outlined the little stars and sparkles that you do with pen or like marker afterwards. I don't think that was a very good idea because after I fully outlined the entire spread with the Tombow Fudenosuke marker, I erased all of the pencil marks. So I also erased the little marks that I would add at the end. And I just don't think it was the best idea. So if you are recreating the spread and doing an outline, I would recommend don't outline the little stars that embellish the spread. So as we are nearing the end of the video, I just want to thank anyone who has made it this far in the video, and if you hear this, please comment pineapple in the comment section below. It is now time for the final flip through. 
I really enjoyed this recreation. I think it was really fun, although it was a bit of a challenge. So to anyone who's thinking about recreating this theme, I recommend it. It's really fun and you get to try out new things such as headers or playing around colors and washi tape. And now on to the outro. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and comment something down below. I love reading the comments. So thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!